Who doesn't like free, right? Click on a challenge button and subscribe to my free 30-day real estate investing video challenge. Every day you'll get a video on how I built my business doing nearly a deal per day. It's two and a half hours of industrial strength training. When you get to my level, you have somebody else pick up the call. That's why you use Bumber because it's a distinct number that you stick in a postcard so you know when that number rings. I don't care who you're talking to, you're switching over, right? And you're talking to them. I'll give you one statistic. This will blow your mind for anyone that's doing direct mail and you want a voicemail. 60 seconds. Somebody calls you and leaves you a voicemail and you call them back within 60 seconds, you're losing 50% of your business industry stats. Can you believe that? That's 60 seconds. That's not like calling somebody back like a day later or 12 hours later. 60 seconds. You're losing 50% of your business. The people you cannot get called back, people you cannot, cannot reconnect with and all that. So in a direct mail, make sure you're in a live environment. If you're a one-person show, if you're a one-person show, you take the calls. If you're a two, three, four-person show, then you just do that. You know, you could use what's that phone system that rotates numbers. Yeah, well, no, no, the, that, that you could ring to you, and if you can't pick up, it rings somewhere else. Yeah, there's Ring Central. There's a bunch of them out there. So anyway, live environment. So that's how you do direct mail. We're all going after the same people here, right? I'll give you some bad news. If you're in Atlanta, everyone you're direct mailing, I'm already direct mailed a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do, we, 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 we talk to every single person out of my office in Atlanta who's got a non-owner occupied home who we all go after, right? Because that's the number one candidate to this. On an average year, my office talks to them ten times. But think about that. No big deal. I'm competing against myself. Bottom lines, it works, right? We're getting just as many deals on the tenth time we talk to Bob and he says, quit calling me, as we are on the second time we talk to him, and we will on the 20th time. So the good thing about direct mail, for you individually, here's how it works. You send out your first set of postcards, you get a whatever response, 10%, 20%. By the way, my postcards get 20% response. Pretty cool, huh? Um, but, but then, guess what? The second time we send the same postcard, it goes down, goes down, goes down, goes down, but then it always evens out, okay? So that's how it works for you as an individual. But how it works for us all in the same industry, going after the same stuff, it, it still bottoms out for all of us. So bottom line is it never goes down below a certain number. That's the good news. So don't ever get in this trap of thinking, well, I can't go direct mail. I can't compete against him. I can't compete against 60 other people in just one room. Absolutely. You're going to get results. Talk to Ramon. He does it. I do it. Do it every day. We hit Atlanta probably every, I don't know, my office rotation is probably about two months. Every two months we go to the same people, go to the same people. So direct mail, absolutely critical. Let me give you a freebie. Uh, marketing. This is how I built my business for the first couple of years. Now some of you guys are going to be above doing this. I used to call a lot of the white pages. Tax records, same thing. When I couldn't do the things that I do now, every morning I got inside the tax records. There's a million services out there that sells tax records information, right? Compile them. And every morning from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning, I would get on the phone and I would literally dial for dollars. And this is what I would say. I'd say, uh, got your information from the tax records. I might as well have been telling him I got your information from the white pages because those tax records numbers are all inaccurate, right? So I told him, hey, here's how I got your information. Um, I understand you own a property. Would you be open to selling it? I did that religiously every day for days, weeks, months, a couple years at least. It's a free technique. You guys can start doing that tomorrow. I understand you own a piece of property. Would you be open to cash offer? If they did, I'd ask them the pertinent questions. Bedroom, bathrooms, how much? So I knew if every day I got on the phone at 8 in the morning and got done at 10 in the morning, I usually would generate three to four leads out of that. In the afternoon, I ran those leads. Build my whole business off of that. Anybody could do that starting tomorrow, right? Get yourself a tax service. I mean, accounting, whatever, that they, they 
compile it. Start calling. Can't afford to pay that. It's only like 20 bucks a month. Pick up the white pages. But you can have just as much success because those county tax records are awful. But that's how you do it, right? Let me give you another secret to why I do what I do and most people don't even touch it. Almost everybody here is looking for the perfect deal, right? When I say perfect deal, a deal you can make money on. Right? I mean, that's what everyone's looking for. I want a deal I can make money on. You're killing yourself. You're losing 90% of your money. I'll tell you why. Almost, I don't want to get into, I know they're recording, so I don't want to get too many numbers out. But an overwhelming amount of our numbers properties, and when I say overwhelming, I'm talking about like 70-80% of the deals I do, when we put them under contract initially, they're not even that good at deals. Think about that. When we put our properties under contract, they're not even money-making deals. But here's one thing I know. It's a lot easier to renegotiate a deal to a lower price than it is to negotiate it to a good price up front. So here's what 99% of you guys are doing. You see a property for $100,000. You work your numbers, let's say you gotta be at 80,000 to make the deal work, right? Let's say that's like your bare minimum, you gotta be 80,000. If you can't get it for 80, you're backing away. 99.99% of you. You know what guys like me do? We tie it up for 95. That's easy, right? What does that do? That beats all you guys out immediately, right? And you're trying to, why can't I find a deal and they can't? Because I'm putting them in the contract for 90, 95 cents in a dollar. And in your mind, you're saying, well, that's stupid. Mm -mm. Because it's a lot easier when you're negotiating going from 100 to 95 to 85 to 80, step at a time, right? That's called the art of the deal, right? You guys think the deal starts and stops at the point of the first negotiations. No way. Talk to the billion dollar developers out there. You know how many times they negotiate and renegotiate their deals? You think when these guys are going in and building subdivisions and they're plunking, you know, half a million just for down payment, you think there's no more, they don't never talk to the sellers again? They're talking to them on the way to closing. Right? It's all in this business, it has zero to do with negotiations. It has everything to do with renegotiations. So time up, time up, time up, time up, time up, time up. Who do you time up with? How do you determine who to time up with that 95 percentile or 90 percentile? It's very simple. Has ever heard the word motivated seller? What's a motivated seller? Mm -mm, none of that. Motivated seller? You knew you were going to get the wrong answer. <laughs> motivated seller is someone that's willing to negotiate. That's a motivated seller, right? You know, people are always out there looking for divorces. They're looking for deaths. They're looking for foreclosures. And you guys are all battling for the same thing. I learned a long time ago, motivated seller is somebody that's willing to do a price drop, right? That's a motivated seller. I also know that we probably can't get the perfect deal right up front. So what are we looking for? We're looking for two things. A motivated seller, someone that's willing to negotiate, somebody willing to do a price drop. That's it. We get those people, you're in business. And then you start renegotiating. Then you start reading, then you start building a case. We're always building a case. So when we're working on a 10 package deal or we're working on a one little house deal, what are we doing? We're building a case. Well, we have to be able to go back and say to the seller, this is why these numbers don't work. And if we can't buy the deal, nobody's going to buy the deal. Got to learn to build a case. Here's why else you got to tie up properties. You can, when you get to a certain level in this business, build your business, not build your business, but have a huge 35 to 40% of your business come as a result of follow-ups, right? It's all about renegotiating and following up in this business. Here's what an average investor does in this business. You're out there putting offers out. You're getting nothing. You're getting nothing. You're getting discouraged. You're quitting. 
What do all you do? We time up, time up, time up, time up, time up, time up, time up. Renegotiate, renegotiate, renegotiate. You can't renegotiate everything. As a matter of fact, in the end, you renegotiate a fairly small percentage. But what you do along the way is you build an incredible follow-up database, right? What's the number one motivator in this business in terms of a price drop? You guys know? What is the number one reason people drop prices? Time. Time is the number one reason people drop prices. Time builds your case for you, right? So when you try to renegotiate from that 90 to 80, and he said no, time is going to build your case. Because then he may go through divorce. Then he may have to move. Then he may have a situation. You see what I mean? Time builds our case. So why is it all about tying properties up up front? Those are all the people now that are aware of us. And they offer us there. When he shows up one morning at work and they fire him, and he says, man, i got to get out of here. I can't afford my home anymore. I've got an option. Right? He now knows there's an option out there. You see? So don't just go through the motions of this business. That's some logic behind what you're doing. You think, think about the, the, the incredible infrastructure it takes to take a thousand seller calls a day. But there's a purpose to how we do things. Is there a purpose to how you're doing things? Or are you just all over the place? So that was another freebie. Marketing. Making calls. Realtors. I think realtors are a fantastic way to build this business. Oh, let me just kind of throw this out. And I don't know if Ramon, Ramon wants me to do this, but all right, I'm going to ask him, then I'll ask you later. Um, throw it out, Pete. Why not? <laughs> well, I was just going to throw out the obvious that for those of you that are out there putting deals together, and if you can't put them together, or I mean, if you need partners, you know, I'm sure Ramon's your first choice, but don't think, don't forget about me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about me. I'm, I'm always looking for more. And the good thing is I close. <laughs> um, all right, let me give you, uh, oh, Realtors. Realtors, another fantastic Realtor uh, acquisition strategy. Free, cost you no money, right? Cost you time. We all have a problem with Realtors, right? 99% of them, total waste of time. And I know if you're a Realtor in here, you agree with me. Okay? But there's that 1%. 1% of realtors that could make you an incredible amount of money. So what's the challenge all the time? How do you find that 1%, right? Because most people get bogged down in that 99%, like you do most of your life, get bogged down in 99% of things that never make you happy, successful, or anything you want to be, and that's where you spend your time. You've got to learn to spend your time in that 1 percentile. Same with agents. How do you identify those agents? I'll give you kind of a brief overview. If I go into a new market and we're looking for agents, this is what we do. We use, again, everything I do, if you see, think about it, there's nothing, nothing I said here that's blowing anyone's mind. The execution level is incredible. The numbers are beyond comprehension. But all this stuff you should know. So let me tell you something else that you guys all know about. A website called Realtor.com, right? You go to Realtor.com, you go to the upper part of that website, you click the link that says find an agent. <clears throat> In the search bar, you're typing in the city you're doing this. So most of you guys are here from Atlanta, unless you flew in from California to see me. Um, but if you're going to a different market, you do it in a different market. You know, you, so let's say you are, let's say, wanting to do this in Charlotte. So then in the search bar, you put the word Charlotte, and then what Realtor.com will do is it'll extract all the agents registered with it in a Charlotte market, right? And you see all the profiles show up. Only click on the profiles that have pictures. Okay? Not for why you think I said that. But those tend to be the active agents. The ones that don't have pictures don't tend to be active agents. So that's like your first screening mechanism, right? Then you're going to a different part of the website. On that website, on that part of the website, you've got a link that says contact me button, contact me now, or you got a link directly to their personal website, and it'll have a contact me button, or you won't have either, and then you skip those profiles. And all contact me buttons do is it's a way to send them an email. 
And on your first screening of a realtor, you're just going to send them an email. You're going to tell them who you are and what you're looking for. I'm a real estate investor. I pay cash. Close quickly. You need a realtor that has experience working with investors, right? Because never work with a realtor that has no experience working with investors. Because it's a totally different world than the retail world, right? We're looking for ones that have experience working with investors that work in, in and out of MLS world that are willing to negotiate on our behalf, right? Because we don't want to negotiate. We want a realtor that's going to negotiate on our behalf and just bring, sign, seal, and deliver deals to us, right? And of course, we, what else we want? We want a realtor that's going to submit multiple offers. If you're working with a realtor that says, let's do it one at a time, just shut them down. So that's what you want. Experience, on and off MLS, willing to negotiate, and willing to submit multiple offers. Put together a nice little email and just start submitting it over and over and over and over and over again. They read it. Once that feel like they can help you, then you don't be back. Hey, that's me. That's your first step in finding a realtor. And then you start talking to them. You screen them out. So you get yourself about 20 agents like that that respond back. And then you go interview them. Right? And you tell them what you're looking for. By the way, you better know what you're looking for. Some of you are here, you don't even know what you're looking for. Figure that out. And then what you do is you task, you task these agents with what you're looking for. Just like you task your employees, just like you task people that are important in your life. Because people will tell you what you want to hear all day long, right? But when you task someone and they do it, you know you're doing with the right, you're working with the right person. When you task someone and don't do it, you get them out of your life, right? That's how you work with realtors. You go talk to 20 or 30 of them that went through this qualifying process I just told you about, and um, they at least answered the right email, then you give them a set of instructions. As soon as you get an auto blast from an agent with 20 random listings out of MLS, you cut them off immediately because they didn't, they didn't understand what you're talking about. But your agent should be negotiating on your behalf, right? If you have an agent submitting properties to you for, for, for it's for $30,000 and they're submitting it to like, wow, look at a great deal, you cut that agent immediately. Agent needs to be negotiating deals on your behalf. There's not an agent in the in, in United States that works with me that would ever bring me dollar on a dollar deal. Because we would laugh at them. So empower your people too. We give our agents the right to negotiate. And we tell them, here's our parameters. We want it at this price, these numbers, boom, 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 this ROI, boom, boom. You sign one document, gives them the ability to sign for you, right? You put the right amount of due diligence space in there, and go let them negotiate on your behalf. So then when you're getting your deals from your agents, right, they're not deals that you have to screen ahead of time or figure out if they're good deals or figure out if you make offers on. Who cares about any of that? Those are irrelevant things. You're looking for the right number. So give your agents the power to negotiate on your behalf. Hey, you guys know what we do here. We do a ton of deals, and, and I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I coach people just like you to help become very, very successful real estate investors. So if you're a buyer or you know other buyers literally all over the world that are looking for deals in a Georgia market specifically concentrated towards Atlanta, you need to be on our buyers list. By now, you'll see my email scrolling across the screen. Send me an email. Just say, add me to the buyer's list. And on a daily basis, you're going to get some terrific, both ROI and equity-driven deals uh, emailed right directly to you. The other thing, if you're looking to become a successful investor, whether you're brand new, just getting started, or whether you're doing it already and you're looking to be a, a bigger, more sophisticated, more savvy investor, I know I could help you do that. Again, you could either send me an email to learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, or better yet, right below this video, coachingbypeter.com. You can go straight there and learn more about how I could help you become very successful in this industry.